once you get past the weird initiation, I gotta tell you, it's really <laughs> worth it. Yeah, but the synthetic. Tricky. I mean, synthetic just doesn't feel the same, does it? Well, it depends upon where you're feeling it, Brian. Well, let's say I'm feeling it internally. <laughs> like in my, like in my heart. Your synthetic body, your choice. <laughs> Hello, everybody. This is this is a weird first date with a Pfizer. <laughs> <laughs> and then the aliens, we keep that in a warehouse in the Bronx where we get the anti-venom, which we then use to create the serum. I missed is all this of this. Is this turning you on? I missed <laughs> all of this. Is this working? Stuff. Have you not seen the Project Veritas thing? Mm -mm. No. Hello, everybody. No, I've never. I've not. I don't. That's the thing where they they you, where you when you post a quote, it's got a truthiness quote code, right? Is that Veritas? No, 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 no. Project Veritas is a conservative organization that has made their bones surreptitiously recording people, uh, usually on on the left. They are they are a conservative organization uh, on first dates where uh, an ape will uh, ask them about their job and they will just babble corporate and state secrets and so their big one was that they just released over the last couple of days is a Pfizer executive mm. who was talking about how Pfizer is possibly using not gain of function research he makes he jokes about how this is not we don't say it's gain of function it's directed evolution but uh, Pfizer is definitely currently manipulating the coronavirus so they can better uh, evolve vaccines and this is over two dates the third date He's like, wow, this kind of seems like a Project Veritas thing. And then they, they add a new wrinkle, which I had not seen them do, which is to do a big to catch a predator reveal. So the date goes to the bathroom and the main guy from Project Veritas comes out and is like sh showing him himself, the Pfizer executive on tape saying all these things. The guy flips out, is trying to call the cops, is smashing the, the uh, iPads. It's it's a real it's a real doozy a doozy of a of, 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 a, of a doozy but uh, with, uh when his, his, his everybody defense, here how his to... defense is I'm a liar I was lying to get laid here's that's, that's here's the defense. easy get out of the way when James Oak goes oh my god I wanted to meet you I've been working on improv classes forever yeah. and I'm so glad that I got this did you record it because I thought it was like my best riff ever. I just, I just felt so bad for the restaurant staff because the restaurant staff is like, all right, please leave. And then the guy's like, I'm calling the cops. Don't let them leave. Lock the doors. And they're like, we're just trying to make pizza. Can we please just make pizza? It's all we want to do. Hi. All righty. Uh, Coolio, uh, you guys ready to do some weird things? Ready. Let's get weird. Andrew? Yes. Yes. Okay. Well, Andrew, I'll count you in for the Weird Things program in three, two. Hello, and welcome to the Weird Things podcast. I'm Andrew Main, joined by Justin and Robert Young. Hello. Brian Brushwood. Ahoy, hoy. And Bryce, the super strong magnet that keeps it all together, Castillo. Whoa, 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 That's my magnetic power. Why won't you let us escape? Curse our, our ferrocerium laden bodies. Hi, everybody. Some fancy words there, Brian. I actually don't know if ferrocerium actually has iron in it, but I assume so. <laughs> I, I, I was totally taking it. I believe it. That's the that's, so, that's uh -huh. your first mistake. Next up, you'll be giving me double portions on Tuesdays. Before you know it, I have a spoon and a tunnel to Guatemala. <laughs> oh, oh. Everybody remember that one? I think that was the Green Mile. Yep. Oh. <laughs> he swam yeah. through a whole mile of green. That's right. What Yo, are we exactly doing taxes the doing whole way? Here. That's right. Well, remember, the funny thing about the Green Mile was like Shawshank Redemption comes out, super, super big hit. And they're like, Stephen King, prison movie, okay. Uh, magic dude with glowing bees flies out of his mouth. Pretty much the same story as Tim Robbins' story. Let's do it. And the Green Mile comes out, and you're like, oh, this is cool. It's not, it's not Shawshank. This yeah. is a little close encounters weird. Remember how like the primary plot was about Tom Hanks couldn't pee? And then one day he could pee. 
Hooray for that prisoner. Too bad he died. Couldn't, don't they give you a toilet? Don't they give you a toilet in all the cells? Oh, no, no. He, he, he was the, the jailer, out. but they give, he they had give prostate you one issues. In, 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 in the gift bag. Oh. They didn't have a staff yeah. bathroom? Mm. 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 So, uh, gentlemen, uh, I, I want to change the topic from uh, AI uh, and anything related to that to uh, creepy videos of shape shifting robots. Oh, thank goodness! No, now well, robots are it. supposed Ruby. to be one shape. O- only the fantastical be, future of Transformers. Wow! Wow! So one sided. So so what? One how, shape, mono shape. How Autobot of you? Uh, uh, let's just Is say geo geometrism of like a form of bias. Uh, look, I've read the original proclamation of Cybertron and, uh, <laughs> I'm just going to say, mm. oh, I don't like hearing that. Don't say that in front of me. Do you keep that? Keep that to yourself. All right. That's our, that's our <laughs> what you, word. What are you? <laughs> Gobot fan? <laughs> <laughs> Gobots so- was such the. Like pale imitation of Transformers, and and you know? yet they in my world they they came out first, and and they even had a cartoon first. Uh, but but there was a bigger machine behind Transformers. Like uh, Transformers would advertise the comic book Transformers with cartoon imagery, and I was like, oh my god, GoBots has a cartoon, and it's like, nope, it's some other thing called Transformers. Yeah, you're right. Uh, GoBots was first, but this Transformers just seemed to nail it. Of course, like the whole, gosh, who knows how the the whole history in Japan of all those toys. Well, uh, apparently those toys were very, very popular, just uh, writ large for 10, 15 years. But the folks uh, behind Transformers were the first to have the idea of instead of like... uh, always the transforming robots were driven inside by people. And they're like, what if we just lose the people? What if we just have the robots have personalities and characters and motivations and Mm -hmm. desires? And one of them was a sycophant who sounded exactly like Cobra Commander. And the other one was just a giant gun. And the other one represented American industry and its giant gas guzzling need to move objects from point A to point B. And, uh, Uh uh-huh. Seemed like that one, <laughs> as opposed to the, we... go, the GoBot story, which was uh, aliens. Yeah, aliens. Can we take a moment to appreciate how awesome of a toy a Transformers or a GoBot toy was? It's a car. Now it's a robot. Well, uh, yeah, it, it was. Uh, it was the original Como no se dos, where it's just like uh, test marketing. Kids, boys, they love trucks, cars, guns. Though I will, uh, I uh, would argue, uh, I would argue that they're they're toys in the shape of robots. That car doesn't turn into a robot; it just turns into a toy that used to be a car. Very <laughs> meta of you, Bryce. Yeah. yeah, I mean, like a very, a very fourth dimensional uh, uh, thinking. Right. I mean, it's. I, I mean, b- d- d- a Megatron is still Megatron under there, even when he's a, a semi truck. It's not like he's oh, got a combustion God engine. Damn, what just I, happened? I, I'm saying kids. I really kids? think that you are, you are, this is, this is a great TED talk for you, <laughs> you know, about conceptual I, realism. I'm digging into the history and it, and it was the toy line that Hasbro bought the Takara, Diaclone, and Microchange predated GoBots. Oh, wow. And so. Right. Uh, I, and uh, correct. Uh, uh, Oh, so in a, GoBots in a, weren't in even a, in a pre-internet time, it took a long time for something in Japan to get premiered in the U.S. For example, the Nintendo Entertainment System originally was only barely introduced in the New York area only, mm-hmm. and then slowly became the uh, nationwide sensation that it was. So then where does Gundam fit in all of this? The 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 perennial Japanese mecha mecha series yeah. is that pre or post Transformers? Uh, pre. Gundam was oh. pre, but but again, there was always a person on the inside of this giant mech. Sure, but but again, the the genius of Transformers was that they they wanted to, as I understood it, for the first time, strip away the 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 homunculus in the middle. Yeah, 
Mm. Because because but, like so I mean I get I understand humans, whether it's Robotech or, or Gundam or whatever. Your mom and dad are humans. <laughs> Your teacher what is a you human. What you really want is, yeah, your teacher, like, that's like the, 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 the uh, humans are the people that have a low voice in a Nickelodeon commercial before the skateboarding starts. What you really want is a robot best friend. Mm. Well, a toy shaped, a uh, robot shaped toy friend. What, you, why, what is with you? <laughs> did, you get, did you not have the imagination to take you from A to B? You have to stop, you know, somewhere just, between the well, two. I'm just grinching over it, it, here. It, it, I'm just grinching over here. Uh, Straight grinching. Let, <laughs> goblin mode, Bryce. <laughs> let me make a pitch because, like, Gundam, Robotech, everything that came before Transformers and Gobots, um, those were all the story of Top Gun. Those were all the story of, like, uh, uh, battle happens, everybody comes home, everybody gets out of their machinery, and they're all like, there was some pretty good fighting you know, when you transformed into this object or that object. Cool, mm -hmm. cool. It's really about us cool pilots or whatever. Like, mm -hmm. it is fairly transformative to it's like, no, 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 what if we just as ascribed to the mechanized objects themselves hopes, desires, ambition, uh, 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 trivial, petty whatever you know so like know. human like human conflicts correct but but without without the extra steps without the extra step of carbon and skin yeah right yeah and and it's like 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 the like like the the the, the jewish story of the golem but it turns into a truck mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. right yeah are we here? Are we but, all here? Uh, we. Uh, oh, I'm sorry. Did I cross the the theoretical line? Uh, uh, Bryce is like, like, is it really a cheeseburger, or is it just the concept of a cheeseburger? Was not too abstract? I, I, I go into uh, uh, Judaistic mythology, and now I'm the a hole. I mean, uh, you're I describing I human shaped dirt, Justin. <laughs> <laughs> no, the point of the golem was that it protected <laughs> people. That it, yeah. it is, it is mythologically among the first ideas of a robot. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I I suspect none of us feel qualified to step up against your thesis, so we all mm. agree with it. Well, that was that was like in all the robot, like when I was a kid, all the robot books, they talk about the golem, they talk about R-U-R, then where the term robot came from, the Kipichek, I pronounced the pretty large name, but robot. It was Russia like a was po po robot, Polish so. word that meant like servant or something. Yeah, yeah. Mm. Uh, so. Rosmovi Universlan Alni Robati. Or is it a man named that? <laughs> Rosm's Universal Robots. Interesting. I want some credit for getting almost all those names right without looking at any of them. Yeah. Shout out, shout out to one Andrew Main. Big shout out. Big, big love. Big love. How? Uh, why my books Andrew, are Andrew big Maine, in Tell us about your background and why you were so quick to know all of the names of, uh, of the robots. <laughs> I was a child a with no friend that wanted right. robots. <laughs> uh, I I wanted a robot friend. I once wondered how many ColecoVision computers there was. The Coleco computers they were selling after they went out of business. They sold them on liquidation sites or sites catalogs. And so as, as a kid, I'd be like these catalogs going. Could I make a robot person from this? Can you explain no, this uh, Hollywood script that you sent me called uh, <laughs> Mithrain? Uh, 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 I'm trying to do a Megan joke about Andrew Maine. Oh, no, it's called Weird Science gave me some ideas. Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> movie, yeah. It would be main, it would be main three. Oh, yeah. How many to make a Kelly main, LeBron? Main three. And then you get two prequels built into that title. Main one and main yeah. two. Well, that's that's the thing too. Like when your hormones and your nerdiness get really confused. Yeah, yeah. Instead of develop social, instead I should develop social school skills to talk to women. No, I'm gonna try to figure out how to build a robot girl. That's that's like the Andrew Main Drake meme of like like uh, I just watch Weird Science. Should I be cool and have a party like they do in the movie? Like no. Like should I dedicate my entire life to building a woman? Like yeah. <laughs> then magic, you're like, ah, it's all make believe. Um I could I could go down the whole pathology of 
how we ended up here. Extreme insecurity and nerd fascinations and how they all tie together. Uh, But what I want to talk about is shape-shifting robots. Actually, I did send Bryce, I sent you a Perry Bible Fellowship cartoon just to close our thoughts on Mm -hmm. the Transformers. Refrigeratron, disassemble. Magnumus, no! You're you're passengers! (laughs) Oh, (laughs) shit! So it's a cartoon yeah. showing a transformer changing shape back into a robot while people were inside. It was not not did not end well for them. Now, if it was just a toy, uh, it would you would just have some scrapes and some little cuts, maybe some abrasions. Huh. You got to so, figure, yeah, they would be ejected, right? There had to be some sort of ejection shunk. method. They, you should see it in the Transformers movies. I'll show you that. Um, they'll yeah. just pop you out at seventy miles an hour on the highway. So. <laughs> yeah. uh, one of the things in science communication and when you talk about how to talk about research is you want to figure out ways to sort of be very open about implications and also talk about limitations for this and also try not to freak people out. That's kind of an unwritten rule. Um, I want you guys to watch a video demonstrating a method of building small robotic devices using magnetic materials and tell me where this lands. Yes, we've got it. Okay. We've got it right here. Uh, all right, so we've got. Wh- what are we seeing here? Uh, it looks like the a magnet Lego controlling movie. like a Lego guy. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. A magnet controlling a Lego guy behind bars. Hmm. All right, so we play it. Uh, now, Brian, what's happening to the minifig? Uh, what's happening? Looks to that like guy? he's kind of melting. It does looks melt. like he's. Oh my, me- god. oh my god! It's straight up the T one thousand. He yeah. definitely figured out that he can melt his body and just. Just sloop a doop yeah. on through them bars, and oh uh, it looks. And like you know what? Melted. Why bother to go back to looking like a human at all? You've already figured out the optimum way for a blob of of intelligent uh, no, keep metal playing, to be. Keep playing. Oh, okay, okay. It's it paused. I thought it stopped. Uh, so, no. oh wait, hold on. Did I leave some of my body wow. behind? Let me go back and get it. It totally so, reformed yeah, yeah. itself. For, for those of you, so pause it. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Justin. yeah. For those of you who are are are, are listening, yeah, the the little Lego man uh, turns into either the the T one thousand or a Capri Sun commercial, depending on when you were born, uh, and then reforms itself outside of the the bars of this fake jail cell. So, to your point, Andrew, if a if a scientific demonstration about new technology is primarily there to demonstrate the utility of it, but also done to not terrify the squares for whom have no idea that this technology exists until they just saw this video. Demonstrating how a robot could escape from jail is probably not the optimum way that you would calm everybody. It's very cool. It's very cool. I mean, it's cool as hell. Scene. Is there... Yeah. So the... It, it, the it, the goal with mm-hmm. this is oh, sorry, Bryce. The goal with this is the ne- the video then goes on to show on show when you want to do procedures inside the human body. So you're using magnets to control this to sort of, and then I think the liquefaction maybe something from heat or whatever. But they show and later on, like if you wanted to get say an obstruction through somebody's part of their body, the idea that you could use these materials to basically go inside mm. of a foreign body in the stomach or whatever. So it's got a lot of really awesome medical applications. Oh, that's really cool. Yeah, and then because it would be, it would weigh more, and you could, and you could use a magnet to to direct it, then you could remove the thing from the body. Yeah. Wow, that's amazing. Yeah, I mean, it is it is exceptional technology. There's there's no there is no doubt about uh, uh, how how rad it is. Who uh, who do we give credit for this uh, this advancement? Uh, this uh, God. All credit to God. Uh, the Chinese <laughs> use of, uh, <laughs> the Chinese use of University of Hong Kong uh, put this out. They put the C in the JC. One of the the Jesuit Chinese. Uh, Andrew, right. Andrew, do you? Uh, one of the things I noticed when uh, when we were playing the clip here was as the as the little minifig was melting, um, they've got this 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 um, axes indicator here on screen. And I can't tell if that's they did that to indicate time is moving because it kind of looks like a clock, or if it's that they're spinning the the fig pretty precipitously. Uh, well, I, I think they've been speeding things up. 
Yeah, but they've got the yeah, X think, axis yeah, that, spinning that, 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 here that looks a... like it's it is rotating the whole. I don't know. I, I guess I I don't know okay. if there's a centrifugal. Yeah, I, 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 it. I, I think it, it that wouldn't that's surprise meant to me. Time. Uh, it, it wouldn't surprise me if 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 from what little I've read about this type of technology internally in the body. Uh, if if that's the external magnet. So a, a lot of what you read, like the headline will be something sensationalistic, like robots inside the body, repair the body. Mm -hmm. Then the robot turns out to be a clump of magnetic material that externally is manipulated by magnets or something like that. Yeah. And I mean, I wouldn't be, I'm, it's not to, to doubt it, but it would be interesting if that's the way that they do it, right? It did look like there's some amount of heating and then cooling to get it to shift phases like this. The paper reports that in addition to achievements in the video, their little robot can jump 21 millimeter moats and climb walls when solid, but subdivide to get around objects before rejoining when liquid. Wow. Uh, with, with or without external manipulation by magnetic forces? Well, they're using external, external magnetic fields yeah, right okay. now. But. Right. Yeah, but that's, that's fascinating. Uh, changing phase like that basically at whim mm -hmm. yeah i, I mean the, the the applications are are you know uh, uh pretty pretty amazing you know i i think you would you could think of a lot of stuff that smarter people than me would probably be able to figure out yeah they've got a clip here oh. of it um soldering uh soldering some silicone um wirelessly quote unquote. Yeah. So uh, if, if, if I were to guess, it would be external magnets and induction heating uh, to uh, take something that, that is at the precipice of always just barely being uh, solid and then in, in, use induction heating to, you know, cool it to liquid or to warm it to liquid. Wow. Oh, there you go. Kind of cool, kind of scary. Yeah, a lot of future's going to be a lot of that. I I saw mm -hmm. something that was kind of cool. Uh, it was a very interesting idea. I don't know if it's really in its ready form, but a company has developed basically a VR e-reader goggles, and you put them on, and it presents your e-reader in front of your face. Sorry, your e-reader? Like e-reading e-books, it's like a oh, yeah. ink display. Swear to God, I thought you were talking about some Scientology stuff. <laughs> <What's> that? <laughs> that's our other podcast, Brian, and that's only for like, really high level like, members. Like I, you mean I can be audited at all time in VR? Yeah. <laughs> Dare to dream. Oh, so that's so it's so. like a one use VR display, but it's for the books. Yeah, and the idea is they use this. E, you know, an ink display. I don't think it was like a super high res, but I think that's their goal. And I was like, man, what a weird way to read a book, but kind of cool. I, you want to know, I was about to crap on it and then I saw it and I was immediately like, cause I am terrible about physically reading things. I, I, no. I don't know whether or not I need Adderall. I don't know whether or not it is just my ADD or, or there's some deeper psychological element that keeps me distracted. And it's very, very hard for me to sit down either with a physical book or an e-reader to keep my attention and not have it go somewhere else. So the idea of just putting on a physical thing and turning off everything else that I have and being fully immersed in it, I, I think kind of, I, I would, I would be into trying it. That's yeah. interesting because I would, I would be the reverse. Like, um, uh, books are fine, but uh, I, I find it increasingly difficult to find any moment in my life where I can dedicate both my spatial awareness, my reading awareness, and just my full attention to a book. And um, I, I, I think the hurdle to actually putting these on would be challenging for me. Well, I mean, I think obviously, look, if, if you if you ain't got time, you ain't got time. Really, my my. The, the problem that I have is that oftentimes, especially for certain research projects, there are books that are written that are not audiobooks, like that just don't have another solution for it. So either I have to, and many of them aren't ebooks, so I have to actually read the physical book or I have to get it on, on ebook. And in those situations, like 
I have to jump through hoops to make myself sit down and and read these things. I have to carve out time very specifically to do it. And there's no other way for me to get this information. I, I need to do it this way. And if I need to do it this way, and otherwise my solution is to find a place away from my house, away from my computers where I, I have less distractions to start working on other things, uh, then maybe a, a, a solution that would kind of instruct my brain to not look for other things is a full on HMD. I, I, I could see, cause I was watching this video and thinking about, okay, I could see when I, at night, when I'm sitting in bed and I want to just chill out and relax and popping something on there like this, cause it's not super obtrusive. It's a pretty small form factor compared to a, a regular VR headset. And then yeah. as I stepped two feet away from my microphone, I'm sorry. Uh, and then comics like if you could get like a really good display that could do comics like that'd be kind of cool and if the price is yeah. cheap enough the this video uh that that we're watching says it's a it, it might be about 350 dollars, which is a pretty decent price if you use a kindle if you get a nice kindle uh that would be pretty similar price yep you know it's not like you're buying a two thousand dollar i i think, I think it would have to be a pretty choice experience like the, the the fidelity on the the lettering would have to be really good it, ha it would have to be a pleasurable reading experience like beyond even what you would see on on a on a kindle uh for for me to justify it at 350 but the good thing about e-ink stuff is that you know it is cheap and the more you mass produce it the the, the more that that price might uh, uh come down but I, I think i think it's 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 not a terrible idea especially i would imagine that it's that it's pretty lightweight too yeah um yeah, uh how much is a, a a quest or quest two um like i thought they were 250 or four somewhere. to five they're 400 to 500 dollars okay yeah yeah um i don't know this this seems like a uh uh, it has a lot of the downsides that any kind of screen has, whether it's your handheld phone or whatever. Um, if, if you want to read it, go into bed. Uh, allegedly, an actual book book is the best way to read because it tires you out and you you go to bed. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know. I don't know. Yeah. Because compared to compared hey, to Brian, other, you are you are definitely you're definitely resistant to this. Yeah, uh, because it seems is this, like is this just you being resistant to books? Uh, no, because like or it was certainly not the cons the consumption of books, but it's like uh, but certainly, it's it seems like a solution in need of a problem. Like, wh what is the problem that this solves? I don't think it's necessarily a solution in need of a problem. I think the problem is people want a light, a, a, a lightweight way to read a lot of books and to be able to download books. And so if e-readers are a popular thing, which they are, right, and e-ink is a indisputable part of that technology, this is effectively just a different way that you can experience an e-reader in the same way that Kindle has a ton of different form factors. Some are bigger, some are smaller, some have ridges, so you can hold on to them easier. There's a million different form factors for it. This to me is just another form factor on an already proven concept. Now, whether or not that form factor is popular, that remains to be seen. And and, and I, I would agree with you there that it is totally unproven on, on, on that level. Uh, the one thing that immediately popped to mind for me is just immersion, that I, I I have gone out on vacation with the explicit idea that I'm not going to do anything else but sit outside by the pool and read. And I still wind up within 15 minutes checking Twitter because I I have my phone near me. There's there's enough stimulus that I rattle off the track where immersion maybe, maybe it would work, or maybe I would just be distracted. And, and that would not be enough. But I do think that that when I saw it physically, I was like, oh, I get to put on like comical prop glasses and, and be totally sucked in to this thing like that, that maybe that would be enough to make me read like an actual human and not a weird 
uh, a wally uh creature that needs to be spoon fed information like a baby like yeah having a book strapped to your face because you won't pick one up is 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 <laughs> yeah exactly maybe but maybe it works right you know you can't uh, you know every every tool is uh uh you know in need of a in need of a purpose maybe this would be it for me yeah i, I counter example uh I I can picture myself on vacation in a hammock reading a book and giving it my full attention and taking my time and whatever. Mm -hmm. um, I can picture myself on a subway train reading a book and casually giving it my full attention. Mm -hmm. I could maybe picture alone in my room having these goggles on reading a book. I don't think I could picture myself on an airplane. W w Justin, would you wear these on an airplane to read a book on an airplane yes on an airplane i would do it i would not do it on a subway uh because i don't trust people on subways i trust people on airplanes because they can't just grab my stuff and run away uh but on an airplane oh my god i would i would trust i mean like i've seen people watch movies with full vive or or, or sorry uh, uh, oculus quest um uh, headsets on airplanes and that has seemed less and less odd to me so I, I could see myself doing it on an airplane i could see myself doing it in in my house or in a, a vacation scenario it, I, if the lighting wouldn't f with it is is that something you've pivoted on because when you first got the quest i was asking you whether or not you would watch a movie on an airplane with it and uh, i was sort of laughed off uh like that was that was a hard pass is that something you're, you're more comfortable not, with? I now? would not. I would not do it. But I've seen more people do it, uh, so it, it is. It is less odd to me than it might have been when we first had that conversation. But uh, for for this, I mean, I don't know. I don't know how I look when I sleep. I was on a plane this morning. I don't know how weird I looked when I had my my gigantic headphones on and my uh, sunglasses on with the a uh, uh, thing drawn down as I'm like drooling on myself. Uh, uh, I probably looked weird then. This would just kind of be the same thing, except the glasses would be a little bit thicker based on the form factor that we're seeing here. Andrew? Great I, conversation, I, guys. <laughs> I, I, I think that a lot of this is going to change when the form factors get smaller. When these things get, you know, are not much thicker than just sort of thick glasses because they're using the, the holographic lenses or whatever, or pass through is really good so that, you know, you can actually, you know, people don't know if you're, you know, wearing glasses or you're watching them. Um, I think it's going to change a lot. Just like we laughed at people with early cell phones because they were, you know, yeah, sell 5,000 shares. I'm holding a Kleenex box to my ear like a phone. <laughs> You know, that that was we thought that was laughable, like, oh, yeah, great. And then phones got smaller and smaller. And then I remember the first time I saw a Motorola StarTac or on somebody's wearing it around their neck like a necklace. It was just this thing. That I'm like, oh, yeah, I, I want one of those now. So I think when the form factor gets smaller and it's easy to get in and out of it and it's not this, you know, all this sort of adjustments, it will change a lot. Um, like we saw with plug uh at open ai with chat gpt was the core functionality was available through our api in our playground but once you simplified got rid of a little bit of friction a little bit of just the blocks to get to it huge usage huge 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 usage we saw that with like in vr with the quest being a standalone like that just sold like crazy for a while and then i think it kind of reached its saturation point of anybody who wants one got one but I think every time it gets a lot easier to use, you'll see a lot more adoption. It'll be less nerdy. Well, I mean, look, you, you, you've seen it with Kindle. Kindle was was a, a device that really, really hit for Amazon because they were able to hit the right price point and the right form factor, and, and they were able to, 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 to sell like that. It wasn't the first e-ink reader that existed. It just became an extraordinarily popular one. Same thing with uh, voice assistant. Siri was, uh, in terms of mass market, really kind of the, the first that put it in people's hands, and not a whole lot of people used it. And till a lot of the the form factor of the home center version uh, uh, from from Amazon came out and and all of a sudden that became something that uh, I think probably more than anything else for kids that are being born over the last you know a uh, uh, decade or so that to me is probably the as much of a 
generationally defining technology if you are raised with that in your life the entire time as much as like pinch and zoom and touch screens are uh uh you know but it needed the right form factor it needed the right price point it needed the right uh a uh, uh, technological element and i think chat gpt is another great example of it is that people tend to discount the the packaging that makes something successful because it's not the well but the technology has been around for a while it's like uh, it, you know, it, it, arguably, that is uh, uh, not the most important thing when it comes to mass adoption. Yep. Yep. Speaking of mass adoption, we would love for you to adopt us in mass. Indeed. Patreon.com slash weird things is where you need to go. Head on over there right now. I'm not kidding. If you don't do it, we'll know. Patreon.com slash weird things is where you can support our program, get our after things program earlier than everybody else, and make sure that we keep showing up and doing this very show. Patreon.com slash weird things. Gentlemen, do you want to do picks? Yeah, uh, I got a pick. pick it's it a bit bit of a bit of a retro one. It's uh <laughs> of all things, DJ Kubert's wave twisters from 1998 um it's a it's a time where a scant what uh 20 years earlier people had started to scratch records and use samples in hip hop and um uh it's a vaguely a cartoon there's lots of animated something or others that go with it um but uh uh revisiting it now uh, tw- 25 years after it came out, uh, it's kind of surreal to realize that uh, uh, even somebody who was 25 when it came out or 24 or whatever, when it, when it came out, like I find it a little bit kind of tiresome and I wish it would move faster. It's like, we get it, we get it. And, and the beats are slow, but at the time, you know, the samples are novel. Uh, it's wild. It's, it's kind of a cool, uh, uh, throwback. Uh, uh, Wave Twisters is the name of it. Nice. What got what got you back into the wave twisting? Uh, well, I uh, I was explaining to Bonnie how good uh, in the Beastie Boys book audio book, uh, Mix Master Mike actually took his segment and produced an entire chapter, uh, uh, you know, an audio soundscape chapter in which he's an alien visiting humans and bonding with them using scratch technology, blah, blah, blah. You know, and I was like, yeah, no, that reminds me of, uh, that got me listening to uh, his album, Anti-Theft Device, that was, uh, that came out just after um, uh, uh, Hello Nasty. Mm-hmm. And uh, and then that reminded me of Wave Twisters. And I, it, it's been a minute since I've just, you know, listened to full albums for the full album experience. But uh, Wave Twisters really took me back. It was, you know, they have this conceit of the the four elements of hip hop. Uh, I think it was um, uh, uh, MC, DJ, uh, uh, graffiti, and break dancing were the four of them. And mm-hmm. uh, they're, they're kind of told in a loosey-goosey uh, style uh, animated. It's it's a bit like a soundscape animation in the, in the vein of Pink Floyd's The Wall or something like that, only with a very mm-hmm. late 90s sensibility. Um, Oh, do uh, uh, so more than just the album. You also do you also mean the two thousand one animated film? Correct. Uh, I, okay. I, I, uh, the film based off the album. Correct. Uh, and so the, the album is what I re-experienced today. Mm. The uh, the film is what put the album on the on the map. So nice. basically, you know, it's a, a late nineties non political uh, version of the wall with with early. Uh, with early uh, Adobe uh, various types of animations. Nice. I got a pick. Uh, Poker Face is a new uh, uh, episodic series from Ryan Johnson of Knives Out fame and Natasha Leone of Russian Doll fame. Uh, this is an ode to kind of the classic murder mystery of the week kind of television programs. Natasha Leone playing Natasha Leone, the only character that she knows how to play, but we it's 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 a fun and enjoyable one, so we love it. Uh, uh, except in this version, 
she has a skill for which I I hope they never fully explain. They just it, it just is, is what it is that she can tell when people are lying. Not necessarily when they're telling the truth, but just when they are intentionally trying to tell a lie and it puts her in the position to uh, uh, solve crimes. Uh, I watched the first two episodes last night. The first four are available on Peacock. I very much enjoyed the first one. Uh, uh, the, the second one, yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm hoping that, that the show continues to go. I, I think that it obviously has a little bit of a hurdle because they are committed to the idea of this being episodic. So while there is a larger mystery and a larger driving thrust that kind of keeps the 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 main plot going, each episode you're dealing with about all these different characters. Uh, but yeah, it's uh, it's 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 fun. I really like the first episode. It has Adrian Brody in it. Ooh, nice. Uh, yeah, I, I'm excited to 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 watch Poker Face. I've I've heard, I feel like I've heard mixed things about it, but I'm glad to hear you say you enjoyed it. Yeah, it, it's a cool idea. It, it is. It is a uh, 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 more. Let me put it this way: I buy the poker face heroine as somebody who is solving these crimes more than I buy an unnamed other protagonist in a series of films, uh, uh, also made by Ryan Johnson. He seems a little magical to me. Mm. Uh, she seems a little bit more grounded that all you have to do is buy one conceit. She can tell when people are lying. She pushes people into those positions. You feel the tension. I enjoy it. Nice. I got a pick. Um, maybe you've heard of Marvel. Maybe. Uh, I've Marvel, heard of it. Eh? Yeah. Yeah. Well, you know, and sometimes they make video games about the Marvel things, all the, the superheroes and the, that's those Super timely Robin. comics folks, right? Yeah. <laughs> well, they got a they got a, a new game out where you where you play with a bunch of cards and you see all of your oh, old stop. friends. No way. Uh hmm. it is from some folks who are uh, well experienced in the genre. They know what they're doing. Mm -hmm. And it may not is exactly Is it a robust card battler? And it may not exactly be what you're thinking of. It may not exactly be what they're known for. Um, but my pick is the 2K and Firaxis game, Midnight Suns. What? Well, look at that. This is, uh, if, you've, if you've heard about the XCOM Marvel game, that's what this is. The XCOM people. Oh, my God. It's actually, it's turn-based strategy? Well, strategy. It's not on a grid like the XCOM games are. You play with cards. So it's a, it's, it is not exactly XCOM. But it's for Axis making an XCOM style. Oh my game. God! We're 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 talking about Sid Meier's for Axis. We're talking about uh, yes. uh, uh, rep, uh, Civilization for Axis. Holy moly! And and, uh, and this it, is what uh, uh, what what platform? I think that's on like everything right now. Um, uh, uh, I've got it on the PlayStation at the moment. Um, not mobile. No. Okay. Okay, now and uh, one of the, I think the coolest thing, I it's got a bunch of characters, it's got a bunch of voice acting, and it's got a bunch of co you play as um, Hunter, um, the Lilith around, and you get to be a playable character called Hunter. So you can customize your character a little bit, but then you also see Iron Iron Man and Doctor Strange and all your friends. Um, what is the coolest thing about this is that when you finish a mission, um. It generates a comic book cover of the characters that you took into it, and oh then you can God. edit the cover and the poses and move everyone around and change the lighting and stuff, um, which in and of itself is just, like, so fun. It makes it all a little more memorable. How much would you trust a doctor named Doctor Strange? Hmm. Uh, uh, implicitly, if it had, if he had five stars on Zocdoc, I would, I would, he, he could be, oh, yeah. he could be called Doctor. I'm gonna kill you, and I'd be like, I don't know. It seems like he's not good reviews. <laughs> uh, Does he do telehealth? <laughs> what? Uh, in an A/B test, who would you trust more? Somebody named Doctor Strange or Doctor Octopus? <laughs> Dr. Octopus. Why? Because <laughs> his name's a Dr. Strange. Anyway. <laughs> He's got the extra arms, Brian. He can do a lot more in mm -hmm. surgery. That's just so. faster. Uh, I see yeah. you in the chat is, is letting us know. It's not, it's not, it is, it really is not the same thing as, as XCOM. It's not that your characters have, 
have their abilities and a certain amount of moves. It's it is it is more card and deck based. Um, so it is a little closer to something like a Hearthstone or a Slay the Spire, where you're where each character has has a um, pool of cards and the characters you bring to the each character is an so. archetype that uh, uh, is, is either aggro or playing for control or. No, no, not really. It's just, it's just that they, uh, each character's got their own cards, and the that deck is made up of who you bring in. But you're not. It's not like say um, a Marvel Snap where you pick the whole deck. You pick the characters, and the characters come with the deck. Anyway, it's it's neat. I think I think I highly recommend uh, checking it out. I played a demo on the PlayStation before I bought it. Uh, it's cool. I think it's pretty neat. Um, and the story is is pretty engaging compared to other Marvel stuff. I think so. Uh yeah, oh. Midnight Suns. Andrew, you got a pick. I have a pick. I'm actually going to borrow one of Justin's picks because I think about you think about institutions that uh that we take for granted but are really useful, like public libraries. Public libraries are amazing, and and to be, live in a country where you have so many public libraries here, I'm in the Contra Costa County. I can go online and through the library, I can get access to New York Times and other magazines. Not to mention, I heard, I heard. I don't have confirmation. I can actually walk into a building and they will give me a book for free. And I just have to bring it back. Mm. Oh, wow. As an author, this scares me. I, but anyhow. It's like it's like it's like Netflix for books. <laughs> yeah. I have a funny story about that. I'll share with you at some point. Uh, but there's a uh, another another institution that if you ask me to say what's one of the what's like the biggest problem globally for development, I would say corruption. Corruption is the number one problem because it is. It siphons. It prevents people from being able to build themselves up. It becomes a way that just really is just. If you look at just the core problems around the world that we have here, but corruption and public corruption really is such a big issue. Well, it bold, doesn't bold get addressed. Take Andrew, because I've always said that badness is the worst thing. But but <laughs> yeah. you would put corruption above badness. That's weird. I'm pro corruption, well, so I wonder. I want to know where he's going with this. You know, being badness, you know, it's not all bad. Well, I mean, it is because it's bad, but, you know. I mean, it's kind of the okay. worst. It's like, uh, I, yeah. I have a hard time. You know what? Badassness is not so bad. So maybe oh, bad isn't see? all that bad. Here we go. Okay. Here we go. But not, bad, the not album bad meaning was pretty bad, good. But bad meaning good. Yeah. 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 My point is. <laughs> you would have learned that in DEI training. Us, I'm talking about an institution that helps a little bit with transparency that's been in front of us for a very long time, since 1979, and that is C-SPAN. Yeah, uh, uh, where are you at? I, I don't think that we've had a forum to speak with you about the idea of, uh, as, as I learned on Great Night, which uh, from Justin, who talks about it on politics, um, uh, that... C-SPAN themselves don't own the cameras that are in the room. They just accept whatever feed the government gives them. Uh, and there's yes. a movement now that it's like, well, I don't know, maybe the, maybe they should be allowed to be there and have their own cameras. I think that would be great. I think that, that would, we've seen when you could see more of what's going on, how it's very eye-opening to the process. And I think that if it's a public process, then I'm all for more of that. Absolutely, I'm for more of that. You know, you have to take into account like, if two people want to sit in the side in their seats and want to have a private conversation, maybe not have, you know, a telescopic microphone to get in their faces, but they should assume there is. Uh, I think I think that we just need more, more, more. Now, uh, uh, I was surprised to hear a counter argument from uh, our friend Andrew Heaton, who suggested that he fears that if C-SPAN was given more access, what we would end up with is even more performance art instead of substantive legislation and reaching across the aisle and actual work getting done. Instead, the incentives would be such that people would, uh, you know, like, why even bother to try to get anything done? Just just show up in a Riddler outfit, as Justin pointed out, and, and do even more outlandish things. If, if I might uh, uh, recite my very polished monologue on this conversation, uh, uh, absolutely not. Number one, we already have a situation right now where people are bringing props and gigantic floor charts so they can make uh, a big impassioned speeches. What what cameras in the chamber would actually do when people are doing that, a thing, prop comedy that happens right now where people are trying to have an outsized uh, uh, opinion and they're giving big fiery uh, uh, Mr. Smith goes to Washington speeches, cameras would reveal that nobody else is in the chamber. 
at that moment, that this is empty theatrics. This would actually take down the ability for people to do that. And not to mention the fact that in a world of social media, there is no material difference to being able to reach out and be exactly as ridiculous as you guys would, 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 uh, as, as anybody would like. So uh, I think this would only further demystify just the house floor, plenty of places in the house of representatives that you can have private conversations. There's the cloakroom, there's their own offices, there's the hallways. There's plenty of places where this can happen, where there would not be cameras. We're just asking that when you come to Washington and when you are debating and when you are voting on the things for which the people have sent you to do, that we have more access to that than three lockdown camera shots that C-SPAN cannot change. Can we address the fact that there still is a cloak room and nobody's worn a cloak in a hundred years? I know. It's so funny because the cloak room is almost exclusively a place where you hear people getting bullied. They should just call it the yeah. the, the the bullying room because whenever <laughs> somebody's getting yelled at, it's always in the cloak room. They're getting grabbed by the scruff of their neck and, and dragged into the cloak room so they can get yelled at. Call it the dagger room. Uh, yeah, I, I agree with Justin that the in due respect to Mr. Heaton, uh, who... Maybe he's projecting a bit what he would use with this camera. Uh, I, I, he, he's also backed off on that. That was his first yeah. blush reaction to it. Yeah, I think that, I think, yeah, I just, I, and yeah, when, don't let the prop comic control the camera. And they do now. But like when they're, you're able to cover more of it. I just think more and more and more, more cameras in city council meetings, more documenting what was said, more there is a there's a library that keeps track of all the C-SPAN stuff. More of that out there so we can understand the process and see what's going on. So I'm a big fan of that. Uh, the other the other part of uh, uh, this that I, I believe is the actual reason why it will not happen and the reason why both parties are in favor of not having these cameras in there is because a lot of the decisions that are made uh, and a lot of the debates that people actually care about and these candidates actually fundraise on, they're not physically in the room for. And they don't want that to be very clear. They don't want it to be, they want it to be written in text where people can ignore it, but they don't want the TikTok, TikTok, TikTok uh, every second that they're not in the room to be a story. And that's what would be the case if C-SPAN were there and all the political junkies and the live streamers and the, and, and the Twitter people uh, uh, would do it. It would hit different and you would see a one quarter full room when, uh, meanwhile, on social media and in emails, these uh, politicians are screaming their heads off about how this is the end of the world. So I think that's the reason why it won't happen. I think it should happen. And maybe they shouldn't uh, Andrew, be the ones you to are decide. wise. <laughs> they shouldn't be the ones to decide. Right? Um, right? Sure. Maybe it should just, th there ought to be a law. Do your dang jobs. Oh, the government is quiet quitting on the cameras. The camera's I quiet know, kidding. Right? That's the, the yeah. I mean, a lot of this is because you can't fundraise from your office in the House of Representatives, so you got to go across the street and start dialing for dollars. It's a, oh. it's a whole thing. Anyway, listen to politics, 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 and, and I'll talk more about it. But this is a good, a good, good pick. And by the way, speaking of Swiss band, everybody on Twitter follow Howard Mortman. He is the communications director for C-SPAN and uh, uh, the clip god. He just pulls whatever is happening in politics. He just pulls old clips that are related to it and posts clips of things that are happening in real time that are being covered on C-SPAN. It's his birthday today. He also has a podcast called The Weekly, which I would highly recommend. 15 minutes once a week. And all it does is pull old clips of things that are happening this week, which I listened to on the plane. Every time that Joe Biden said as a candidate that Iowa was indispensable to be the first caucus in the nation, which he said many times and articulated with forceful passion leading up to this year, or sorry, last year, when he effectively buried Iowa in the backyard by saying that the Democratic uh, primary process would now begin in South Carolina. So uh, 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 go ahead and go ahead and get that. It is, uh, it is great. Uh, Howard Mortman, just an all around great guy. Nice. Oh, that's great. Gentlemen. It's been weird. There we go. That's a show. Howard Morkman. There we go. Uh, that's a show. Hey. 
All right, you guys want to take a short break and come back for some after things? Yep. Yeah, I've got. Uh, I was eating beef jerky on the way in, and I got a, a wedge in my back tooth. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah. All right, everybody. Well, we'll take a minute and uh, and do that. Hello, everybody. Well, it's a Friday. We're still. It's still Friday. Thank goodness it's weird uh, things. Do you got to head out, Justin? It is still a Friday. No, I can hang out. Okay, sweet. Um, I wonder if you like that. If you would like that Midnight Suns game. I know you're not much of a a sit down gamer. You're more of a mobile gamer. I like to move, man. I gotta be moving. Ashley got into Snap. She oh, yeah. got tired of watching me play Snap, so she decided to play Snap. Uh, uh, oh, do you have do you have Apple Arcade? Did I get you on that park pocket card jockey, uh, game? That's a I great don't have game. Apple Arcade. No. Of all the things, I'm so I'm such a simp for subscriptions. I just I, I fall into these subscriptions, and then like three years later, I find out that you know some artisanal. Uh, um, you know, a uh, Michelle Gondry fan fiction uh, subscription got me for eleven dollars a month for the last five years. Uh, That's what you get when you sign so, up for yeah, Michelle I, Net. I know exactly. Gondry, Gondry stream, Gondry Plex, Gondor, uh, <laughs> Gondor sends for aid <laughs> once a month. Um. Uh. But yeah, have you seen the menu? I did see the menu. Did you see the menu? I did see the menu. What did you think about the menu? What did you think of the menu? I liked oh, it. Jinx. I liked it. I thought it was fun. I thought it was. Uh, 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 I thought it was more of a romp than I thought it would be. No spoilers. I uh, okay. Yeah. All right. Without getting into spoilers, <laughs> uh, I enjoyed it. I thought the acting was strong, and. Uh, uh, Andrew, I'll be curious when you when you watch it uh, to get your opinion because there are there are story questions that I have. Mm, 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 mm. Yeah. yeah. Um, I just don't want to like overthink it when I watch it and miss out on enjoying it, which is sometimes my problem. Yeah. Uh, yeah, that was really. <laughs> if you were to describe my problem with the movie, it was that I wound up overthinking it. Uh, but then again, I'm also just I don't know whether it's me or. I am in working on this world's greatest con season. All I'm thinking of is like constantly with my own, with our own story. I'm just thinking of like structure, structure, structure. Where does this go? Where should it go? Where, you know, motivations? How do we tell the story? How do we invest everybody into it? And so it's like, uh, uh, I, I, this is not menu specific. This is everything. I'm constantly thinking of like, Oh, I don't know. They should have put that before that, and that should be there. And if you know, but it'd, it'd be stronger if it didn't have this thing. Hmm. Uh, but it definitely does feel like a, um, like a, like a, like a very. I'll bet you it was amazing as a, as a blacklist script, which apparently it was for a while before it wound up getting made. Hmm. 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 I can very much see see where it's like it's it's a great premisey thing, and and certainly this is you know the 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 shingle in which everything is hung. It is, it is a great satire of booty I, culture. I, I will say I enjoyed the movie a lot. Not, uh, not having heard the word satire. <laughs> Cause I, it wasn't until I was done that I was like, Oh, that was kind of, Oh, okay. Um, kind of leading to the idea of not not overthinking it i i felt like i didn't overthink it at all and had a pretty good time yeah yeah um yeah 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 i oh i've got a uh i've got a product i've got a small productivity tip for after things that'll be good good yeah so take that wow oh i will I will, Bryce. I will take your productivity tip, and Gotham City will be wrecked by it. Um, can I? Can I just say, uh, the whole AP style guide and how much restraint I had mm -hmm. of not putting out my favorite meme ever, Justin. You know what it is? Did you see it? I, I put it. I, I put the screen. Grab. Oh, you did? Oh, I didn't see. Oh, yeah. good, 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 good. I. Oh yeah, 
Oh yeah. No, there's no nobody can say the French without <laughs> there was what, what was it? Was it the um was it the lecture tour where we just that was probably twenty five percent of, of the dialogue between Andrew and I was just going, Ah, the French. The French Champagne. And I've had to deal with <laughs> uh in in my yeah, I internally I've used that a lot too. <laughs> The people oh, from France. People with French <laughs> <Fred>. champagne. <laughs> I was talking to some some of our employees, some people who were from France, and trying to explain this. I'm like, I just got to show you the meme. And then it was a very interesting. <laughs> uh, I I don't know if the same person is running the Twitter account, but I met the woman who ran the AP Style Guide Twitter account at South by Southwest last year. Whoa. And all I I had nothing but conversation. I had nothing but questions for her. So I wonder if she's still the one uh, uh, running it. But oh boy, oh I mean, like number one, I, I, the, the the thing that I I talked to her about was like the AP style guide is thankless. It's it is nothing but a a, a bastion for nerd arguments constantly, always. And and they have they have heroically put themselves. In, in the center as the referee of a million different word nerd battles. Um, I, like many things in the AP style guide, I've got my questions on how and why they make certain decisions. Uh, uh, and, and that Twitter account, it, it keeps the brand active, but holy crap, is it is it uh, a, a, a flame war factory? And that, that tweet yesterday was no exception. Oh, I miss, I missed the tweet. What, what was it? Uh, it was the AP Style Guide saying that according to the AP Style Guide, uh, <laughs> oh my god! You see the update? We I deleted. Had to apologize. We did not intend to offend. Of it, writing French so people, initial, French citizens is good. So the initial, um, the initial tweet was that you should not use the blank for for stuff. So not. The disabled, the, the nerds, blind, the uh, and uh, then the marblers, yeah. the and weirdos, then, and then they said the French. So, it, like, literally, the examples they gave were like the disabled, the blind, the French. And so, instead, you should say people with disabilities, no, no, people oh with All blindness. Right. And they did not use a French thing, but people with French became <laughs> uh, I, a thing. And uh, 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 at that moment, you realize that you're maybe on an issue more aligned with Andy Rooney, RIP, than <laughs> than, than everybody else. What's the deal? After all, oh, that's more Stossel. Well, Andy Rooney, Andy Rooney and Stossel shared DNA in terms of impressions, but not not quite the same. Uh, certainly uh. not in terms of sentiment. Uh, oh, certainly not. No, I mean, yeah, yeah, you gotta uh. you gotta be able to say the right. Uh, so they apologized and said the French apparently is is that wait so they, were they apologizing were they saying uh, no that they were saying never say use the, the. no no they no they said if you read it French, for an for inappropriate reference to French people no, but look at the earlier guide they were never saying never use the they right. actually were phrased it correctly I think in the way that they said uh they if you go to your first tweet you find that the way they phrased it was like outside of context or whatever and it was like yeah they yeah. used it i think it was meant as an example here's a here's a fine way to use it but the internet being the internet and compressed this very lossy compression the message became oh the french is bad and it's like no that's actually not what they're saying trying to say not that i want to go out of my way to defend the ap but yeah screw the ap so so uh, no no yeah. I, I i will say the ap style guide is heroic it is heroic for for, for putting themselves in the middle and being the referee Nobody should have to be that that hell. No one should live in that hell. They they willfully do it and and they take fire from everybody. Now, when they expand beyond just saying exactly how they should uh, uh, write certain things, that's their own decision. But in general, the AP style guide is something that 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 should be commended. If you if you have a problem with it, then you put out your own style guide and deal with a bunch of word nerds up in your business twenty four seven. Uh, yeah, I don't know. I I I find their reasoned arguments uh, crashing up against the wire, in which you know 
the uh, the former mayor says, uh, uh, "Oh, big silver bowl. This one's from the unions. What am I supposed yeah. to do? Eat it? You know, this one's from the well, ministers. This one's from the blacks or whatever." It's like, uh, and that was a TV show. You can't uh, not here, do a TV here's, show. Here's the original wording. The original wording from the tweet that they deleted. We recommend avoiding general and often dehumanizing the labels such as the poor, the mentally ill, the French, the disabled, the college educating. Instead, use wording such as people with mental illness and use these descriptions only when clearly relevant. So I think they were trying to say <laughs> something more nuanced, but I don't think it really worked. Yeah, so if they didn't have the French part in there, it would not even be a story, I think. You can't... It's, it's the French that's in there. Yeah. The, uh, 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 I think otherwise it's, that is, you know, uh, inoffensive, even on the level of like, you know, let's, let's adjust our, our, our speech kind of, uh, kind of stuff. I don't know. People uh, with the, pe people with people with television show, the wire is how we should <laughs> refer to that. Uh, you know what? Why not quadruple the number people of syllables and still say the same thing? It's like uh, I don't know. It, it, uh, it makes people feel dehumanized. Uh, uh, I mean, okay. I mean, I mean, it's it is, I, it's, it it's is, poor communication. It it takes longer yes. and is more ambiguous and gets you nothing. Uh, I I typical, really lack typical, typical from, I don't, mm, okay. typical I'm trying from, to like give the nuance of a. I'm trying to explain it from like their point. Like that, like well, if you look at it, but it's so hard because you're like the French. No, use mental illness instead. <laughs> It's like, okay. <laughs> All right. You want to go? Yeah. Uh, anything else before we start recording? Or go no, ready to rock. Sprays? Sorry? Do we have any topics for this one? Uh, I mean, I, I got a little thing I can talk about. Other than that, I don't have anything for you at the moment. Oh. All right. <laughs> sure. <laughs> I'm sorry. I can. <laughs> I... It's not. I didn't, I didn't. I didn't know there would be a test officer. Um, are you a cop? Are you a, are you a teacher? You figure it out. Uh, no. Uh, yeah. It's, uh, I got. I got a little thing. I can. A little productivity thing, but I don't have a big topic. Yeah, that's good. We're good. Okay. All right. Then I'll catch you in for the After Things podcast in three, two. Hello and welcome to After Things. I'm Andrew Main, joined by Mr. Bryce Castillo. Hello. Brian Brushwood. Hello. Justin Robert Young. Yo, what up? Gentlemen, this is the After Things show where we help people with after things or we help ourselves do things after. Mm -hmm. After things. the things. Yes. And uh, speaking of things, anybody ever use things? Oh, I yes. use the things app all I the did. time. I did. I did. I did very briefly. It, it was it had too many bells and whistles and switches. And so for anybody's brain that melded with it, good on you. But I have a very smooth brain <laughs> and, and it did not cotton to things. <laughs> hey, Bryce. Bryce. Hey. Hey, you still up? writing things down on note cards? No. What? No, not a not at all. Turns out I stopped doing that. Really? I it it was it was helpful. It was helpful in solving those those the a, a specific problem but i've gone back to 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 things and to trying to do things and i've i've got a little tip that might help if you need some productivity stuff uh and this doesn't have to be things but i did this on things you're not using enough emoji mm -hmm. okay can we, can, are you can, are you telling me specifically or, no, or it, it, is it's just uh you're not using enough emoji the dam is breaking uh, emojis. Explain to me why it's better to open up a menu and mm -hmm. hunt and peck for a picture of a thing mm -hmm. rather than use an emoticon at mm -hmm. most. I mean, is that what I told you to do? I'm just saying you're not using enough emojis. <laughs> do you think you're using enough emojis? Are uh, you using enough emojis? It's been a hot minute since a parent of mine has tried to get me in a trap. <laughs> But, but this is a fun revisit of what that feels like. <laughs> no. uh, so I, 
I don't know, Bryce. Am I? So one of the things that Dang. with with the things app that is a little tough, I kind of use it as my every my everything planner. So when I have a thing in there, I throw it for the, either this is my today to do or this is coming up on a day. And one of the things that was tough was just kind of feeling like there was a whole wall, just a whole waterfall of a million things to do and not easily having a having a way to like overview it or under, or take a sense of it. And so one of the things that I did using um uh using their project Don't silence or, it. Using, Bryce, I sent you a text. Okay, I'll, I'll get I'll get to it in a second. Uh I'm it, using more emoji. Did, did did I just see cuz I I I just saw Bryce very professionally refuse to glance at his watch and mute it yeah. unseen to continue his monologue and then yeah. I saw oh, the Another co-host on this program. Um, what's a what's a what's a word other than professional? Um, the <laughs> to interrupt the show to, to, to point out how Bryce was Bryce. being yeah. professional. Well, this is certainly want, emoji. Yeah, they are emoji. I'm using more emoji. But I I have started on on things when you have something in one of their areas, it shows it. And at first I was, I was not doing, cause like, this is just more text. There's just more words everywhere. And it's a lot of the same words. And so now I put a little emoji in there. And now when I look at my things, I know, I know what all these things are. I know what these things are at a glance and I've got icons there. And what, what is the, what is the bag with the dollar sign on it mean? That's for marbles. Okay. <laughs> it's for Marvel. Look. Oh, it's not, it's not, this is a profitable enterprise <laughs> and this is a bag of money. <laughs> Why is there a bag with a dollar sign on it <laughs> on your marble? Why why is there a do- is it- a, do- a bag with a dollar sign on it on my personal project LFG marbles? <laughs> is there is there is there an emoji for roast? Because that's what Bryce has wandered into. <laughs> what do you want? You look, you gotta get stuff done. I sent, I sent, I sent more emojis the, to our the, text. The S, oh my god! The S stands for smarbles. <laughs> look, it's a, it's a, it is a money. Look, it is a money venture. I'm not, I'm not just doing it for my health. There, you know, it's we. There's big a Patreon. money, big money, Bryce. There's a Patreon. There's things going involved with it. So, so yeah. Um, but, but just, just that little bit of oh my goodness, that's a lo- okay. There you go. That's emojis. Uh, it, it 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 ended up helping me uh uh get a better sense on this stuff and it 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 seems uh obvious to just use categorization tools in your in your planner but it, that really does help well, i feel like it, you know it's only been a few days but i feel like i have a better sense of what things are categorizing things and making sure using the uh, spending the right amount of time on everything um I don't know. I, I, even when I would do well, I, I, yeah. so, so sell, sell me. Oh, now I'm getting emojis. <laughs> oh, uh, so, sell, sell oh, you can't do on, that to the pig. <laughs> sell me on. Uh, I find emojis <laughs> problematic. Okay, Sorry, it's just fun to say <laughs> because I find be, problematic problematic. I'm over problematic <laughs> be, because because like. Um, you you can't can can you search through a database for an emoji? Yeah, they have a search on, em, yeah. on the emoji keyboard. Okay, but you have to open an emoji keyboard and look for I'm the not, right picture. And I'm not look. I'm not. I'm not saying you need to be using emojis all the time. What I'm saying is big emoji here. I have incorporated them into a non into a part of the process that I don't need to post more emojis. I just make I put them in the right category. It's got the thing attached to it. Uh, uh, and if I change it, they all change. Uh, I'm, 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 I'm talking about being smarter, not harder. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like we walked into a Project Veritas video. <laughs> I feel like I, I feel like I feel like yes, uh, the uh, passion uh, that, that, that really that, that, sold that, that, him. You got he was he was all the used. way there. <laughs> that that is, that is the phrase I could have used after a few uh, uh, underwhelming first dates. <laughs> okay. Um, what I'm I'm not saying you need to use emojis more. What I'm saying is that I have in, I have integrated them into a part of my productivity workflow that makes 
that is a soft organization. <laughs> <laughs> I hope somebody's clipping all of these. It's an organizational tool. <laughs> I didn't even mean that one. That one I didn't even mean. <laughs> you never do. You never do. All right. All right. Can, 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 we, can we maybe take a sojourn oh. off and do? Uh, because I have finally admitted that anybody younger than me doesn't appreciate emoticons. They all just, just scream old person. But they do like emojis. Uh, and so I, I have a few emojis that I think are, are universally... Um, inoffensive and and a good way to almost like replace the the period in in traditional text. Um, the best of which is like almost anything I say, I can end with the smiling faced halo emoji. Like like eh, I'm great. I'm an angel. <laughs> like uh, if it's sarcastic, give, give me an example. Give me an example. Please give me an example. Uh, this sounds unhinged. Actually, uh, let. I'm going to search my texts and see how often they show up. How about that? Uh, while I'm looking for that, there we go. I, I had a similar thing when I was learning, um, uh, learning some of the Swift and some of the JavaScript stuff is when, when they would just incorporate an emoji, just, Hey, like use it. And even that little, uh, interruption of like, Oh, instead of like trying to come up with a string or some sort of data or something, uh, just use an emoji. And that kind of gets you, that could, that gets you where you're going. It adds a little bit of color and a little bit of pop, uh, and it can be, uh, done smartly. So you're not, I'm not saying you need to be in the emoji keyboard all the time. So uh, I just did a search for every time I've ever used the halo emoji. And the first one that came up was a text uh, on December 30th from me to Dan Carlin that said, Hey, Dan, I'm Good sending job. you this link before Justin finds out. I'm strictly forbidden from sharing anything until it's done. But Justin is off watching Avatar 2 and therefore won't get in trouble. Uh, therefore, I won't get in trouble until after he finds out later. Halo emoji. Uh, that was a good use. Um, for was the it, record, this was an actual violation of trust. This was that, that he's not theatrically doing it. He was sending but, it to Dan Carlin. But I used the halo emoji. <clears throat> <laughs> um, mm -hmm. uh, a friend of mine uh, at one point was a Nielsen person. Uh, he is not anymore. The TV counting folks, yeah. Correct. Um, here's a text I sent. If you're interested in binging Hacking System today, it premieres on Disney Plus. Halo emoji. <laughs> <laughs> and your argument that these are good uses? Of the, that these are good use cases? Yeah, you're trying to violate somebody's trust in each one of these, Brian. <laughs> uh, yeah. Oh, he's scrolling a long <laughs> way emoji? down. He had to scroll a long way down to find another halo. <laughs> well, uh, B B Bonnie oh. sent me a sports thing, and I what responded day? all caps, Bonnie just sent me a sports thingy, and she said, ha, ha, ha. And I responded with three halo emojis. Uh, what does the halo emoji mean to you? It's provocative. <laughs> <laughs> Brian, the art gallery owner. <laughs> This blank canvas with a and, dime store cockroach nailed so, to it. Uh, what is so it? your argument the, is that this is the I've thing said. that you should be using. <laughs> Just assume each time I heart my own text, I'm really hearting you. <laughs> hey, little emoji. Why don't you heart her text? Mm. Oh, uh, my goodness. Right, yeah. did you see the halo emoji? <laughs> I'm told there was one. Yeah, there, there yeah. are government officials that I've They're handled emoji. Wow, I use it a oh. lot. <laughs> Guys, I use this. I'm so emoji sorry, Brandon. A lot. He shouldn't have sent you the halo. I, I no. use emoji all the time. Good. I knew a girl that like went on Twitter. She was on Instagram, like, oh, older guys who use emojis or whatever. I'm like, I'm not trying, I'm not trying to pretend I'm, you know, much younger than I am. I just like them. They're just helpful. They're just sometimes like I'm you know, when I when I talk, I have expressions and I put these in my face to sort of make things spin things. And with pure text, emoji is my facial expression. Well, uh, I mean, you know, it actually does solve a problem, which is, you know, the Internet and text in general is where context goes to die. That's that's something that I've, I've said for a long time. And uh, uh, it is real when it's the reason why you 
really have to be careful about what you put in emails or text messages and stuff like that. And that often my, my recommendation for that is read it in the most exasperated, angry tone you possibly can in your head and assume, especially if it's something that's emotionally charged, that that's how the other person is going to read it. So if you are writing something in all caps or in excl- or in a bunch of question marks or something like that, understand that that's going to be read in, in a very specific way. What emojis do is allow you to bring context, a lot of context in little pictorial form. I do think that it is extremely important. I do think that they are something that are very, very helpful. Uh, uh, for example, if you are denoting sarcasm or a joke or something like that, to put a like laughing emoji or something or in, into it allows you to give context to something that could otherwise be read as serious. I, I don't think that people fully understand how much our language and communication, specifically written language and communication, is uh, uh, radically different when it is received versus what your initial intentions are. Emoji, uh, emojis give you more control on showing context on that. And I think that it is an extraordinarily important thing. Uh, it's it's almost, would it be an overstatement to say it's almost like a, a legal advancement where it's like it denies anybody the opportunity to pretend like you're being sarcastic, rude, or uh, secretly talking about another thing or whatever. If, if you label, I mean, I guess you could still be all of I mean, those things. But at least it, it is an explicit statement of I'm trying to be this kind of way about it. I, I think I think it's it's more core to public opinion, right? So let's say that you get a text message and you are really upset about it and you bring it to your friends or some kind of uh, mutual friends with, with somebody that sent it to you. And you say, oh, my God, can you believe this person sent this to me? It obviously means X. What the emoji gives uh, the, the sender is more control over whether somebody else would say, I don't know, they put a laughing face. It kind of seems like they're joking, uh, um, you know, on, on, on the other side of it. It doesn't guarantee anything. It just gives more context. Right. Uh, and anyway, well, th- this is all, uh, just zhuzh up your life. You can, you, there, are, there are already things that you don't even know about that you can zhuzh up with more emoji. Put him in your calendar. For example, I would, put him in your email. I would argue, I would mm-hmm. argue, the success of Notion was based upon its real easy integration of emoji. Yep, mm-hmm. that's where I use it the yeah. most, and it also helps me uh, uh, think of uh, uh, you know these projects and stuff that I do. Like I'll, I have to think of when I first started, what is the emoji that encapsulates this, and it gives me a conceptual idea uh, of what I'm working on. I, I think that it's, it's really rad. I, I, I do, I do very much enjoy that part of, of notion. And also it graphically just pops certain things, which is very important. Livability in something like that is extraordinarily important and elevating it beyond just a simple utility. Yeah. I mean, even here, you know, we, we record this live on Twitch, you know, uh, Twitch emotes are a whole thing. It's an economic yep. model of this website is we have our own emoji. You can make your own emoji and share them, et cetera. Um, yeah, I forgot about Notion because, yeah, Notion has you. And I think that was a little bit why I liked the idea of what was that calendar app we were using for a minute? Um, calendar? No, the um, the one that was like a to-do list. Um, oh, my God. Yeah. I know, Today, I, tomorrow, sunrise, sunset. It was something. Something. Um, but boy, I think, boy, did it make an impression. Though. <laughs> but I think it, it, it attracted me because it you would pick emojis. You would pick icons for your different tasks. And I think maybe that was all I needed. So, uh, mm. <laughs> well, that's wild. So I just went to chat GPT and I took a text that was in our group thread. And now, asked was it the whale it to, or the pig? Uh <laughs> Uh, sorry, I, oh, <laughs> I, I don't know what just happened. Uh, what happened? Oh, there we go. Um, so uh, this is a previous uh text that I did, and I just told Chat GPT to uh, uh all I did was copy it, paste it in, and said, 
please uh, add appropriate mo emojis to this. And, and it makes me wonder if chat GPT might solve my problem, which is the hunt and peck nature of essentially going back to kanji or pictograms or uh, uh, what have you, the hunt and peck of emojis. Like if I could just say, uh, you know, type whatever I want and then just say, mm -hmm. click a button that it's like, guess appropriate emojis and then it does it. Yeah, I guess. I don't know. I think there's a personal style to it as well. You know, I, I, I think that there's value in kind of having your own emoji. I mean, if you're not an emoji folk, uh, person, I, you know, then. Bryce, I want I want you to have your own Netflix series called Judge Up Your Life. <laughs> and you and you go visit somebody who needs his, who needs the judge mm -hmm. and you and you give your own Bryce. Can we call it Here Comes the Judge? judge. Here comes the judge. Here comes the judge. No, that's a segment, right? That's that's like somebody uh, yelled, "Here comes the judge!" Uh, as like you uh, know, hip hop that, music that's plays. Like, that's like a bunch his, of cameras that's, that's cut like as he taffer, walks towards the yeah, five that, people. Yeah, that's like his Taffer shut it down line. Like every <laughs> bar down. rescue has to begin with with Taffer screaming, "Shut it down!" Mm -hmm. Like like we we our opening seg one our cold open. It ends with here comes the here judge. Come, here comes the judge. I love it. Yeah. Netflix just ordered a second season. <laughs> oh, Netflix canceled the second Ah, season. damn it. Dance. Turns out that while everybody that. watched it once, nobody watched it four times. They didn't watch it four times. Yeah. Turns out you're 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 not you're only three and a half quadrants. Hit the bricks. <laughs> uh, but I would love to hear from the listeners if they've got any other interesting places where they use emoji as a part of their productivity or lifestyle workflows. We got the contact info in the show notes. Actually, I, 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 I would really love to unpack this because it's like not only where can you use it, but also uh, what are the roadblocks? Like, for example, like I experienced, like I've just decided, fine, I'll use one emoji that generally means mm -hmm. I mean this nicely, and that's the halo emoji. Yeah, but that's, I think that's what most people do, though, right? Like is did, pick a couple of emojis that they use a lot. Like I've got, I've yeah, got, I've a got few that basically I it's either a thumbs up or a halo for me. A uh, very, very little, or maybe mm -hmm. laughing, crying. That's about it. Yeah. I use those. I use the triumph face. The oh. one with the steam coming out of the nose. This one's pretty good. The okay. shrugging, uh, always the woman. Shrug ne emoji. Ne never a guy. Yeah. Always a woman. Bold. Yeah. I got a pick. Go. It's an audio book that is, I believe, two hours and 15 minutes long uh, called You Have the Right to Remain Innocent. Uh, I forget what led me on this rabbit. Oh, you know what it was? Uh, there was a New York Times article talking about how Alec Baldwin is now being charged with involuntary manslaughter, and almost certainly he's going to go to trial, possibly have criminal conviction for one reason, because he talked to the police, because he thought that without representation, without legal counsel, he would just go help. And so he spent multiple hours talking to the cops, explaining everything, and uh, uh, even offering his own theories on what would happen, even offering them advice on what they should do. And then he went on multiple television interviews, speculating wildly about all of this stuff. Um, meanwhile, in the New York Times, uh, uh, Farjan Manju uh, wrote an article saying uh, Alec Baldwin, Baldwin was under no obligation to talk to the cops and neither are you. And he referenced the wildly popular viral video hit, Don't Talk to the Cops. I think it's up to 14 or 24 million views right now. Uh, it's a very, very quick listen. At, uh, there's about 30 minutes of substantive content and 15 minutes more. But it's very, very good because it makes the case that even if you're in innocent, even if you want to help, even if you happen to be 100% right, even if, even if, even if, uh, there's no upside because even if what you do is present a very good case that is indisputable and 100% factual, the in a court of law, nobody is allowed to introduce anything that you said because it will be over uh, objected as hearsay and the judge will support it. So uh, he makes the very counterintuitive. Uh, well, and also if you're wrong, 
Uh, well, well, if you're wrong on any one part, or even if you're right on all of those parts, but somebody else, for example, the cop, disagrees with what you said. <clears throat> now, all of a sudden, it's your word against theirs or whatever. Like, there's literally no upside uh, uh, per his thesis. Um, and it, uh, specifically, uh, so first I rewatched the 45-minute video. Then I watched him talking at the Cato Institute. Um, and then I ended up buying the book specifically for this reason. Uh, I, I don't think he's joking when he says that the reason he wrote the book is because there are two types of people, and the two types of people are not the guilty and the innocent. They are those who are familiar with the criminal justice system and those who are not. And anybody who is the child or a close uh, sibling of um, a law enforcement officer gets one set of advice, and the public setting uh, facing set of advice that any cop will give is a different set of advice. Um, and, and that felt unjust to this person. So he wrote a very, very short book. Again, it's only two hours long. And it basically, it's, it's just a rogues gallery of terrible, terrible stories of people who really thought because they were innocent, they were doing the right thing by offering up testimony without legal counsel. And it, goes poorly for them. And um, he's, he's very, very upfront about none of this is an indictment of anybody in the noble profession of law enforcement, what have you. Uh, but he does find it unfair that there's one set of advice given to the public writ large and another set of advice given to the close uh, close family members. Um, it, I, it's an easy read, and I think it, an important one that is worth it. I, I think it's a very I, I do want to pack thick. I don't remember ever being told anywhere, talk to the cops, like tell them everything. I've, I don't remember that in school or being told that. I, I, I've always, it's in TV and film, ask for lawyer, ask for lawyer, ask for lawyer. But to the point that he's trying to make overall about, yeah, like, like I think that the hard part is like, when you watch a lot of these videos where people, the cops, like, you know, true crime stuff, the tricky part is, you don't know when you're a suspect or you're a witness. Correct. And, and they're under no obligation into, to tell you. Yeah. Somebody comes into a bank, pulls out a gun and says, everybody on the floor. And now you're in the bank. And afterwards, the cop said, what were you doing? Do you say, I want a lawyer? Right. Because you know you're innocent. You know that. But, and that's, that's the really hard part. The tricky part of it is, is that, is that point at which you're, we're used to doing Moby's where like the suspect sits down and we know they're the suspect. And when your talk cops like, hey, I need a statement from you, that's the tricky part is to know right. what's going on. In Alec Baldwin's case, he was the guy holding the gun. So probably a good indicator that, you know, not bringing in a lawyer, probably a bad idea because you're clearly the focus of the investigation. You're the first person. Or to look or, at, so or, or at least that. a principal character in it, right? Um, and yeah. It, uh, like so many other people, Alec Baldwin truly uh, didn't perceive like, well, I mean, clearly I did nothing wrong. It's the job of the gun handler to handle the guns. It's the job of the actor to assume that the gun handler knows what they're doing. However, part of his testimony involved some version of the phrase, which I'll certainly get wrong. Uh, basically, they handed him the gun and, and they said it's safe. And they said, do you want to check it? And he's like, no, I don't want to offend this person. Yeah, the, I'm sure it's fine which now he's on the record recorded yeah. or written down as being somebody handling a firearm who refused to engage to make sure that it was safe. A very, very minor detail that now is a significant portion of the trouble that, that, that he's yeah. in right now, you know? And, there, and there's it, an argument. Yeah. It, there's an argument you said that, that cooperating the police after this thing happened because of that, that maybe that was the right thing to do in that way. but the media interviews and all that other stuff it was really disastrous, really, really disastrous. And that's when he goes into, you know, the, when they go to bring up the case, that's, you're going to probably see video clips from those interviews and things, maybe additionally to what he told the police, but the fact that that story may have evolved or changed over time, you know, yeah. he, he, he's thinking that he's only trying to win a PR war. Um, and, you know, meanwhile, a woman is dead. Right. You know, well, and, and, uh, and one of the things I like about this this particular book, You Have the Right to M Remain Innocent, is that it's 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 basically just a list of cautionary tales of 
perfectly good, legitimate, innocent folks who could not conceive of a reason to not talk to the police without representation. Uh, and, and, then, and, 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 and he does go into, hey, uh, uh, now keep in mind, look, yes, I'm not saying when you're pulled over for a traffic stop, refuse to talk to the cops. Uh, you know, if you're trying to report a crime, of course, you know, you talk to the cops. He says <laughs> um, all of the very sensible situations. He says, I am talking about when something happened and uh, you are a principal character uh, uh, do not trust yourself <laughs> to 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 think you understand because this guy's it's it's uh, I think the the metaphor he gives out at one point is imagine that you were offered a hundred dollars to get into a boxing ring and fight someone you're like sure why not uh, that person has had thirty years experience of just oh. knocking people out in the ring you oh. know yeah yeah that's your your, whenever you watch these, you know, true crime documentaries and stuff, and you see the people talking to the police, all the police officer does all day long is talk to liars. And, you know, your experience with police, probably most people is very, very limited. And that does sort of say that you can get a lot about policing, though, know, that people have more interaction with police kind of know how to lie. But point is, like, yeah, it's, 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 you're just not prepared. You don't know the direction. And also, we've seen, you know, the, the prosecutorial overreach. We've seen in situations where, what did Martha Stewart go to jail for? Uh, uh, right. Uh, not doing anything illegal except for being incorrect in her statements to the police. Uh, or, or, well, or she lying. did. The, ar arguably, the, the, what, the, the trading, the insider trading could have been a fine, could have been, was, was breaking the law. But the other person who was fully cooperative, whatever, apparently just got like a fine. And that was the thing. Yeah, it was the lying because they could, that was the bigger, the, the goal of a prosecutor is what is the biggest penalty I can get you for? And if it's a minor infraction, but you lied about that infraction, well, I got you on perjury now. So uh, it's just, that's, that's, and I think we see, we've seen a lot of those cases, you know, we saw the, the massage parlor case in South Florida, where first it was a sex trafficking thing that they were trying to look out for these innocent women when they couldn't make that case, when all of a sudden it was looking like, oh, they're not going to be able to make the case because they had to deal with high power attorneys. It became, we'll go after the women. And that's one of these yeah. scary signs of like, they wanted a prosecution. And even though they said, we're here to protect you, like, well, no, we're going to actually arrest you because we can't make our other case. Wow. Uh, uh, you have the right to remain innocent. Yeah. From James uh, Dwayne. It, it's, it's, nice. it's a very, very short read, uh, uh, worthy of just reminding you, even if you are pretty certain you already know everything it's going to say, you're probably right, but can't hurt to, to hear it again. Uh, My pick is the Fraternal Order of Police. <laughs> I don't know who these people are, and I'm I'm with you, brothers. <laughs> uh, my my pick will be the Things app. I've talked about it so many times, but uh, I really dig it. I think it's really intuitive. I think that uh, it is uh, it's like a blank piece of paper. Uh, you can build it kind of how you want, uh, but it has a lot of intuitive features built inside of it that does take it it does take a while I, I won't i won't i won't i won't lie it takes a, it takes a minute to get it set up the way you want it but once you got it set up then you're i don't know it feels really natural to the way that i work so uh the things app on uh, ios my pick is blank paper okay yeah uh sure. no actually uh i watched the first season of the show and then i kind of the pacing towards the latter part of it kind of slowed down a bit for me. And then, but I stuck through it. And then I said, okay, let me go watch the next season. And I really, I just binge watched the next season in a day. And that is Slow Horses on Apple TV. What is, what's if the you, premise of Slow Horses? I don't know that one. So Slow Horses, it's based on a novel, a series of novels. And it's about this, this British intelligence office called Slough House and where Slow Horses comes from. Mm. And Slough House is, if you're an MI5 and you screw up and they want to get rid of you, but they don't want to just fire you, they send you to Slough House to where this older spy played by Gary Oldman runs it. And his job is to sort of make your life so difficult that you just decide to quit. And he gets some very, and it's, so it's a group of very misfits within the spy world who end up having to, you know, solve some pretty big cases. 
And it's Gary Oldman's great. The cast is fantastic. And so it deals with a lot of backstabbing and et cetera, whatever. But it's a really cool premise and setup because it's he's a really great spy, but he's a complete slob. You know, you're open, the, I won't spoil the introduction to him when you meet him, but um, he is he is, you know, his 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 employees, you know, will criticize the fact that watching him eat is disgusting and whatnot. It's just Gary Holdman just pouring into a role and making it great. And uh, anyhow, so Slow Horses on Apple TV season one and two. Nice. Nice, nice. Any other picks? Mm. Gentlemen, it's been after. Oh, I like that. <laughs> <laughs> the Delta dudes. Alrighty. Well, thank you everybody for joining us for some weird things and after things. We're going to go offline. Um, yeah. Coming coming up later this evening, we got Marbles at 8 o'clock Central. Make sure you join us for that. Monday, we're back with Cord Killers. Tuesday, a great night. All sorts of good stuff. All right. Say goodbye, everybody. Goodbye, bye, everybody. Bye, 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 everybody. Bye.